Good morning, welcome to Fairy and Spoil. Right, today I'm going to show you how to treat an insect bite if your dog gets bitten. So I mean like um, by gnats or you know bugs in the garden, stuff like that. Now if you've watched my other videos, you know how much I love this cream. Now this isn't being sponsored or anything like that, this is just me, what I always use and what I highly recommend for you. So it's tea tree, Johnson's tea tree cream, and then it comes in a liquid spray, in a li just a pure liquid. And these two are just ideal. And like I said in other videos, that why I love this combination so much is because the cream really, really does a great job at stopping the itching and it really heals things up. And I love the spray because if there's an itchy area, but you can't actually see anything, nothing's come up yet, you can spray a whole area and it works really well and stops itching and things like that from coming up. So my little Harry, who isn't here, he's in the kitchen, um, he has a bite on him at the moment. Who have we got? I'll show you a little Albert. He's just having a sleep here in the sun. Um, so um, Harry has a bite on his leg and I'm putting the cream on it probably maybe every two or three hours at the moment. What's really important is that I don't leave him with the cream, that I don't leave him with the bite on his own because he will tear that bite to pieces and um, obviously I don't want that. And in like literally in seconds, they can just turn it into a really awful wound. Here he is. Um, within, oh, he's a bit limpy. He must have been lying on his legs. Um, within seconds, they can turn that into a really, really massive wound. And you don't want that, trust me, you don't want that. So um, the things I would say is, get the cream on it as soon as you can. Now I'm a real advocate, actually if we go, we might be able to see it. I don't know if we'll be able to see it or not. I, as you know, absolutely, or we might be able to see it. I, as you know, absolutely love um, Johnson's tea tree cream. Now I'm not saying that it's the only tea tree cream that's really good, but it's um, it, it works really, really well. I've always loved it. Um, I'd really be interested to hear if any of you are using a tea tree cream or any sort of cream for, for itches, um, anything that's like an itchy bite that's itching and something that stops the itching but also really heals up the heals up the bite. I'd be really interested to see hear what you're using. We can't actually see the bite, the ways line at the moment, we can't see the bite. So I won't be able to show you, but it just looks exactly the same as when we get bitten by a gnat um, and it just drives, you know, the itching, it just drives them crazy. It's exactly the same. So that's what I've been doing with it. Let me have a little look at my notes. So, right, so what I do is I put the cream on and then if the dog is small enough, so if my other dog Albert gets it, I'll pick him up and carry him around the, look, we look out the windows, we go out into the garden or whatever, until the cream has a chance to really, really go in and do what it's gonna do. And it does a great job and for a good couple of hours, he won't bother with it. If this dog here, Harry, um, gets bitten by something he's too big I can't just pick him up so what I do is I put the cream on the bite and then I hold my thumb on top of the bite now they will lick your thumb and around the, the bite but the cream is not dangerous to dogs in any way so obviously you don't want them licking loads and loads of it and they wouldn't really but they will lick around the area and so they will lick some of the cream so if you just keep your um, thumb on top of the bite then that cream will go into the bite and they won't be able to lick that off um, and then just try and keep them distracted so that they don't bother with it too much um what else uh don't cover the bite up because you want air to get to it as quickly as you can and let it dry up just the same with us you wouldn't cover up a gnat bite don't cover it up with them and if they've got fur covering up the bite do your best to either trim that all off if you can or if you don't if you don't groom your own dogs then just cut around it if you can safely then cut around it so that you can get cream into it easier and the air gets to it easier now i didn't bring it with me we're gonna have to go for a little wander so come with me we're gonna have to go for a wander into my kitchen i came across this a few years ago completely by accident sorry about the camera work it's making me feel sick completely by accident i came across this but honestly it was one of my little genius ideas um now and again when you own dogs you do come across them don't you You come across something you think that's just genius that's helping no end so you know when you get a nap bite how itchy that gets and how it's unbearable and yeah but you can't actually scratch on it well you do don't you 
but obviously if we let them actually scratch on it then it's going to cause all sorts of harm and just tear it open and you'll be in a right mess so I came across this idea a couple of years ago so I get a piece of kitchen towel it has to be kitchen towel tissue doesn't work it has it's too soft you need the sort of roughness of kitchen towel so I don't know if expensive kitchen towels might be too soft but I get the cheap stuff and it works brilliant and so you just fold it into four like that and then you just rub around the so let's say for example let's say for example this square here is the bite I get the the kitchen towel and I just do that around the outside and just go around the outside of it and then if it's still driving them crazy so if that's the bite I just get the kitchen towel and I really gently go over the top and I mean really gently so around the outside I put a bit more force into it so that I'm actually getting it all getting all the lovely itchy bits all itched and then this bit in the middle really go light with it go really really light with it so you're not breaking the skin or anything like that but you are just itching it for them now obviously in an ideal world nobody would be itching these bites but if you don't do it the dog's going to do it and the dog is just going to tear himself to shreds with his claws so if you get your kitchen towel and you just gently do this and you just do it like that do it like that it does it stops the itching and when you take it off they don't go back to it because them going back to it is what's going to drive them absolutely it's just that's going to open it up and then you've got a great big wound and then you've got yourself into a right old mess so let's just go back so you just get let me go back and demonstrate on the dog so we go back sorry about my recording who wants to be my demonstrator albert do you want to be my demonstrator okay so let, well, let's pretend with albert's so actually earlier in the year he had a bite a really nasty bite under his chin it's all healed up now and all i would do is get the kitchen towel and just go like that nice and gently now at the time he absolutely loved that because the bite was itchy <laughs> i've made him itch now the bite was itchy and this took away the itching and he absolutely loved it can we demonstrate again on anybody albert can we demonstrate should we demonstrate on you again so imagine you've got a bite there so you just gently rub it so really really gentle so to begin with go round the outside of it and you could put a bit more force into that imagine if there was a bite there you could go round the outside of it and you could put a bit more force into it and that would take away the itching and then if you take your kitchen towel away and they still go after it and supposing that's the bite there you could just go like that and you're going really gentle so you're not breaking the skin you're not making anything bleed just going really 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 gentle and that takes away the itching which is so much better because once i was working i was working from home and it was albert here who's licking his bitch you don't need to see that um and i was working and um albert was lying asleep under my desk you know i didn't think anything of it he was asleep i was working thing what i didn't realize was that in like seconds he had gone at a nap bite he had and it just opened right up and it was really awful there was blood everywhere it was really bad um and i did a quick dash to the vets just to get some um just to get it cleaned up because it, it it really opened up and it shocked me how quickly that happened because i was obviously concentrating on work so if you have now got a dog that's got a bite i'm just a lot more aware of them and, and making sure i mean i'm always aware of my dogs but obviously i was concentrating on work i thought he was just asleep under the desk you know that was that but um it was just in those few seconds so like i said harry here that you're seeing now he has got a bite on his back leg and so i'm doing everything i've just said that told you i'm doing and then i just keep an eye on him like a real eye on him so if you you know like when the dog oh look at him falling asleep so you know when you've got a dog that's just um you know they do lick themselves and scratch themselves and stuff like that but if i see harry doing it i'm just a lot more aware a lot more aware of it right let me just run through my list make sure that i haven't forgotten anything no that's it right okay so that's everything so it's really simple so the cream once the nap bites come up put your thumb on it or distract the dog by carrying them away keep a real close eye on it be putting that cream on every two hours at night time you're kind of going to have to take your own judgment on this do it definitely do it before you go to bed 
and then take you out. I personally would, all, my dog sleep with me, but I wouldn't leave a dog on his own during the night with a nap bite because he could just open that right up. I also am not a believer in um, the head collars for dogs. I think that's just some kind of torture for them. If they've got a niche they can't get to, um, and you put a head collar on them, I mean, that must just be awful. And the other thing is, I think, don't be fooled. Don't think just because you've put a head collar on a dog, he's not going to get to it. Because even though he might not be able to get to it with his mouth, he will find a way. And I've seen dogs rub them on, just rub them open on carpets. You, and they don't seem to be bothered about the pain issue. If they, if it's itching and it's bothering them, they will just open it right up. So, you know, I really would recommend that. Well, personally, I just, if my dogs are with me and if I know they've got a bite, I'm just much more aware of them during the night, any moving, any scratching. Um, and I just have the cream next to my bed quickly put it on everyone can just go back to sleep no big deal and like i said that um the li the liquid that that comes in um is really really good because it um you can if you've got if a dog is scratching at an area but there's nothing there you can't see anything then you can just spray the area and it just stops it really is good at stopping whatever the problem was coming up it's really really good now, something I do need to mention is don't get these nap bites mixed up with hot spots. They are not the same thing. I've got a whole video on how to stop hot spots and itchy skin in dogs. And if you've, if you've got a thing on your dog and you're not sure it's a bite, go and watch the hot spot video. It's a completely different thing. Hot spots come from within. It's not something that came from outside. So it's a completely different thing and needs intensive treatment and a, com a complete life it's a completely different thing it's not the same thing as just getting a bite so my dogs are treated especially little albert here he is heavily treated for hot spots a complete lifestyle everything about his lifestyle is to stop hot spots if you watch that video it's all in there but having a nap bite is a completely different thing although some of the treatment is very similar to how you treat hot spots so go and watch that video if you haven't because it, it is very different and it's really worth knowing the, the difference because you don't want to be thinking, oh, they just got a bite or, um, you know, something they've grazed themselves because they can, hot spots can look like grazes in the beginning and it's a hot spot because if it's a hot spot, you putting cream on it and all that, it might stop the initial hot spot, but it is not going to stop the problem. You are going to have that problem forever. So it's, you really need to know the difference between hot spots and if your dog's just been bitten by a gnat or whatever. Right, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.